So where's the office, back at Division? You're in the office, baby. Going up. What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast. Sex fires. Touchdown, Garrett Wilson. Wow. In the end zone. Oh, what a catch. Jeremy Rucker, give me that. Fields, the throw, steps up, delivers deep down the field. He's got a receiver. A long way, touchdown. Now here's your host, Joe Warwick. The Ohio State Buckeyes. What is up? We are back once again. Sorry for the layoff, folks, but it is fucking summer. Uh, Not a lot going on, but is there or isn't there? I don't know. As always, this is the only commercial-free Ohio State football podcast you will find. I will throw a dozen others under the bus and tell you how they all have commercials, most right in the middle of somebody's sentence. Uh, Buckeye Scoop, going to go ahead and point my finger at you tonight because I love your content. You have all the insider info, but maybe you got back on a commercial or at least... Position it a little better in your fucking podcast, not when a guy is answering a question, especially about JTT, okay? Just advice. So, as always, folks, appreciate everybody listening. Please, if you would do us a great favor, give us a five-star or any star review. I I would take a a two-star at this point. Uh, Any review would be great. If you have a question, please don't forget to, uh, you can send it via Twitter, email, you can email me at joe at thebuckeyecast.com. Uh, Twitter, obviously, is always at castbuckeye. Yeah, I know, it's a terrible Twitter handle, but they shut down my other one. That was much better, trust me. Uh, another story for another day. Anyways, uh, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, oh, the supply store just redesigned the entire website last month. Just launched it a couple weeks ago. Shit is out there. It's it's more efficient, more uh, user friendly, and uh, gives you that comfort and uh, friendly factor that Sean, I know you enjoy when you're shopping online. I I, I enjoy it. Yeah. All right. So. We do have some new designs on the supply store, so go check those out. You might love the Marcus Hall Double Bird Bird, uh, t-shirt up in uh, Ann Arbor. That's a classic. Uh, Sean inspired me on those designs, so. Let's get into some bourbon talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's get into some bourbon talk real quick. Um, Sean, Sean, you uh, run into anybody or anything? Useful lately? Um, I ain't run into anybody or anything useful. All right. Uh, but, but uh, no, I haven't had that much bourbon lately, but I've been uh, sampling some different beers. Bell's got a new one up, and I like, yeah, no, no, no yeah, something like that. It's nice. But no, nothing on the bourbon tip as okay. of late. Well, I need to tell you about uh, uh, Jeff came over a few weeks ago with the family and I, I uh, bellied him up to the bar and put him through the paces. Uh, Jeff, you, do you remember anything you drank that night? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good, good, good. good. Uh, that makes yeah. this segment much more important. Yeah, Sean, it was nice. Joe has, Joe has an extensive collection, as you may know. Jeez. And... Uh, I had a lot of stuff that he has talked about that I had never even seen bottles of, wow. let alone tried. What a, what a, so, what a treat for you, man. That's nice. Yeah, so I, I got to try some Pappy, a um, couple different Wellers were nice. Um, I mean, we went through, like, uh, we went through the Buffalo Eagle. Joe, you, 
Yeah, you'd have to help me out with some rest of that stuff, Joe. Yeah. Did um, you do all the well kind of eight, eight. We did the, the was it twelve year? Yeah. And the private uh, stock. The private stock. And yeah, the antique. Did remember. you do the antique and the uh, the the? Um, no, I don't think we got to the no, end. I don't think the, we got too deep. deep. That was bottom shelfer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was it was nice. It was nice. So it was cool. There was a lot of stuff that I hadn't tried, and Joe kind of, you know, was able to tell me, "Hey, this is what you kind of the taste you're going for, whatever what you're looking for in it." I learned a little yeah, bit more about bourbon. It was nice. He yumped it up for you. You were like, hey, he, "He did." Yeah, he yumped yeah. it up for you. Yeah, it's like he being did. Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah, basically your Brooklyn kind of set up hipster types. I I, uh, yeah, he, d- I comb my mustache out. Him. John, yeah, you put the suspenders on, dude. It was ridiculous. Like, it, yeah, it was ridiculous. My, he, his mixers. sleeves were rolled up. Like yeah. his, his sleeves were rolled. It was weird. Yeah. But and it was a good time, though. No, as a, you know, a lot of bourbon that I, you know, people would talk about, you hear people talk about uh, stuff I hadn't tried yet. So it was nice. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of that's uh, stuff that you're not going to get to try much of because it just ain't available. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I know if when World War Three does break out, Joe will be selling his Buffalo collection for fuel and food uh, and anything else he needs. Because he could, yeah, he, he could probably support Central America with his Buffalo stash. Yeah, I do have a nice little warehouse down in the kitchen <laughs> cabinets. <laughs> Not bad <laughs> with extra. That's that's the uh, holdovers from that couldn't fit in the bar. If we were allowed to have basements in Florida, Joe would have one. Oh, oh Jesus. It'd be so perfect down there. I can picture it now. So, yeah. Uh, so, we put Jeff through the paces. Um, we enjoyed a 10-year, a 12-year Pappy. Uh, we yep. Did, we did uh, about 25% of my bar, maybe. But, you know, it's a small bar, but it, it, uh, it contains a lot of useful things. Um, I haven't really done anything new lately. Uh, no, not really. Walking stick has been kind of my late, lately my go-to. That in Woodford. Um, I just ran into probably my last bottle of Eagle and my last bottle of Private Stock, Weller Private Stock, in 12 years. So get a little thin. When's Christmas? Yeah, I think my I think my next bottle, I think my next bottle is going to be the Eagle. Yeah, yeah, you have to buy that online, dude. Did you get some of that Blands? Oh yeah, we tried Blands. Forgot. It. Yeah, we did. And yeah, we talked about the horses on top and shit. Uh huh. That's really that's a that's a cool design. Yeah, I I, I know I have those. I got like two that are unopened, and the toppers are you know the toppers. Anyways, so let's get into the show tonight, folks. Uh, yeah. Sorry to slow it down there if you're not into bourbon talking. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about a quick update on JTT. We're going to give you a quick little recruiting and portal update. And then our main topic, embrace debate topic, is the 12-team playoff. And I'm sure we have three different opinions on one topic there. So... Uh, quickly, let's let's talk JTT. Oh, and we do have some Twitter questions. I have three Twitter questions. Hopefully, we can get those tonight because uh, you're really going to enjoy the Twitter handles that they came from. Um, I always do. Yeah. I always look forward to that. Yeah, you can never predict what those Twitter handles might be, and uh, they're creative. Um, I'll give you that. I'll say that <laughs> to put it put it nicely. So. Okay, recruit. Uh, let's see who do we have here. Caleb Brown, receiver out of sh- excuse me, Chicago, 5'11", 177. It's a four star. Uh, a composite nine seven three eight. Nationally, a sixtieth uh, overall player in the twenty two class. Uh, fifth in his position. Second. Second highest player in the state, so uh, Caleb Brown. You guys, uh, you guys know that he was a huge Michigan lean initially. 
I did know that. Uh, and yeah, the, their their boards blew up pretty big yeah. over that loss because they thought uh, I don't know why they think these kids are going there, but they do. And I, then it hurts so bad. Yeah. What hey, Sean? From what I kind of saw of just you know Michigan reaction uh, is like they they thought it was. They thought they were in a good position with him because they thought we would overlook him and not want him. And then we decided we did want him, and then they're like, well, fuck, now we, they knew they, we couldn't get him. Yeah, because we don't take top 100 guys. I don't know why they would think that, because maybe because of position. It's like, they're, like their whole philosophy is flawed. Like, they're, I, I mean, they just, they just lose kids. They just lose, it. They lose everybody. Well, I think I think that they were thinking that hey, we got a um, we got a five star quarterback from that neck of the nape, and you know maybe uh, maybe you get this kid to come and follow behind him and um, yeah, true. Um, I thought didn't happen. Yeah, I'm not surprised actually. Um, so not not hurting. Uh, He's a little small, so hopefully he puts on uh, a couple inches in height, and definitely gonna put on some pounds when he gets in the. It must be he must be crazy fast, huh? Would you, yeah, would you say Joe five ten, five ten one seventy seven? Five eleven, yeah. So five eleven. I so, tell you what, though, that's, I mean, hopefully, yeah, like you like you saying, Sean. Maybe hopefully he's got elite agility and or some elite traits to play the slot. Well, you know, we don't really take but I those. I haven't seen much tape on the kid, but we don't really take those small guys like a Mookie Cooper anymore. I mean, there's a reason he left. It wasn't just because he was homesick. Um, but anyways, uh, I, let's say he gets up to six foot. He's like a Jackson Smith and Jay Butt type, maybe you know, and puts on a few pounds. Um, not definitely not with pedigree in the uh, the high school. Uh, experience of, of uh, Jackson, but uh, the other recruit we, get, we just brought in was Dallin Hayden last week out of Memphis, five eleven and one ninety five. Another four star, a nine one two two composite. Now he's a low, lower ranked guy. He's a he's a two thirty five nationally um, and twenty fourth at his position, but. Uh, guess I'm guessing that's going to uh, change over the next year as people see this kid do other camps uh, and obviously getting a, an Ohio State offer always helps your recruiting rankings magically uh, so and if if Tony Alford likes him uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trust him he's done okay yeah, Joe, I agree. Uh, I definitely, I mean, I'm excited about the kid. Uh, just from everything I've heard and the little bit of video I've seen, uh, once he recruit, once he uh, committed, mm-hmm. I, I like him. I like. Him. I think. Uh, I, I think it's good too because the, they're not. You're not getting a top five guy that's going to come in that room and then, you know, going to want to leave if he doesn't get it's you know 20 carries a game. Right. Uh, that room's going to be full. It's, it's stacked. I think it's the you know next year. Uh, I think our twenty twenty three guys, they should be. I think they're targeting a couple of like top you know like top five bats again. Right. But we need this. We need a year. We, we, it's kind of like a kind of like a steal. You know, we can kind of steal this guy away. I think he grows into something. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see him. I'm excited to see him, you know how he. Uh, you know, he's still a long ways away. Any many of these guys, it's a long ways away from getting them on campus. So, right. but uh, I, I don't know. I like to pick. I like to pick up. I mean, you got to have confidence in the coaching staff. If they offered in this early, right. you know, then that means they they want to lock it up. They they probably shutting down the position after this. You Sean, know, what I would you, guess. Yeah, Sean, what do you think about uh, Evan Pryor being his host? Um, who was his host? Evan Pryor. Oh yeah, um, I, I did not know that. Um, I, I I don't know. If I guess know. Evan Pryor. Evan Pryor or anyone else, but I, I'm with I'm with Jeff on this right now. And and what you said, Joe, he probably moves up the ladder. To me, this is a really strange year after the COVID recruiting, and I think you're going to have a lot of diamond in the roughs with you, if you will, of guys going up and down 
these these rankings, you know, because they're mm-hmm. in any camps and this and that, and you know, you you don't play in the big time Texas stuff and what this guy's from, you know, some league in Memphis, um, you know, and he, he's um, got- he go to any camps and yeah, I mean, I I, I I'm always excited when when they kind of go out and and grab one of these guys um, that you, that isn't a typical Ohio State recruit, uh, you know, top 100 guy, but the coaches are excited about him and they like go after kids. I'm like, man, they see something in him. So I get jacked about that. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I Joe, he, he's going to be a high, probably a very high four star by the end of this season. Yeah. You know, if he, plus, I mean, if he, especially once he starts playing football, you mm-hmm. know, then his stats or whatever are going to, you know, escalate him. Right. We, we see uh, that. Right. Definitely. Time. Yeah. It just, it, it just like, I remember when we when we signed Zeke uh, when Zeke committed. Oh yeah, he wasn't. He but he wasn't like the top three or four running back in the country. Oh no, he was like maybe like top ten, right? He wasn't even a five star. Eventually, I mean, no, he, he still was I, a, a four when uh, all was said and done. Yeah, I, I want to say he was probably like ten, eleven, twelve in the country at his position. Yeah, uh, and Bama and a couple other teams came in way late on him just because they saw that Ohio State was so bullish on him. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just going to happen. I mean, this kid's going to get a lot more attention now. Yeah, and he's, his, his ranking is going to be higher, so it's not like he's going to bring down our average, you know, recruit, mm-hmm. you know, number that we like to monitor so much. No. Uh, I think the kid's going to be fine. I, hopefully, he stays healthy. Uh, and you know, and nothing changes. So the relationship stays good. You know, for another year. Yeah, so. you got to remember that he's following uh, a five star and a four star in the class ahead of him. So there's absolutely no pressure on him to um, come in and start immediately. And that's probably for the better. Um, you don't want, uh, especially a kid that's maybe not the highest ranked, to think that he's going to come in and get carries as a freshman. You know. Yeah, they didn't have to do a, probably a huge sell job to him. You know what I mean? Promise right. him any type of shit. Yeah. Um, they said, "Hey, man, you want to you want to be a part of this?" And he's probably, like, "Yeah, I think I do." Uh, more than Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame was was really high on him. Yeah. Uh, they, I think they thought they was a leader for him. Um, but them's them's the breaks, yo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's uh, quickly run through these two portal exchanges. I'll call them transactions. Uh, our guy, J-Mo, goes to Bama via the portal. What do you guys think of that? Um, I mean, the guy only had 15 catches as a Buckeye, but they seem to be big catches at times. Obviously, the Clemson game sticks out, most recent. Uh, it sucks to lose a guy, but um, you, you can't deny, and, and any realistic person... Uh, is going to realize uh, the quality depth behind him, and and probably going to miss some, lose some snaps. Well, I mean, the, it, it, what a testament to the wide receiver room, where you know a guy, you know, I can see a guy transferring out of that room. Well, you're transferring to Alabama, right. who's been just an absolute factory at wide receiver um, for however long. And and he's probably going to go there and, and get some significant playing time, uh, a lot more than he probably get at Ohio State. It's just the, the room's too crowded, um, and you know, I, I I don't blame the kid. He's a D one wide receiver, and and he deserves to get some serious looks. And there's just not enough footballs in Columbus. So good luck, J Mo. Uh, hope we kick your ass in the championship or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna put. I would assume that he's gonna earn a starting spot at, at Alabama. Um, just Maybe. They, I mean, they I have don't men, know. I mean, they ha- I mean they have other recruits. It's not like they it's not like they stopped recruiting after they signed uh, Waddle and all those guys after that right. class. It's not like they just said, okay, we're good for the next two years. That They've been bringing in. Yeah, they match. You know, he was a five star. They, they have they still have five stars, but. He's gonna play. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll put up decent numbers, and I'm sure he'll go to the NFL. Um, I, I, if any, if it was gonna happen in any position on our in our program, I'm glad it happened in receiver. And it's not gonna be the last one, probably. Un- right. You know, unfortunately, just because there's so much, you know, the talent's gonna separate over a whole another season from like next up, like 
So next spring, you know, plus with what's coming in, yeah. we're going to have more guys move on. You, you know that. You know we will. But when that's when you get, but that's you. you that's, that means you're having impact freshmen coming in, like Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Jane will probably saw him and was like, "This motherfucker's for real. I, got, mm-hmm. I ain't gonna be. He's this kid's all about it." Yeah. Uh, he he made, saw, he saw Amika walk in the door. He's like, oh, "Yeah, <laughs> right." He's like, <laughs> "These motherfuckers are for real." Uh, yeah. and, but and you, Jane, but that, Jane, what was that dude that walked in the room, mm-hmm. the freshman, and you know, dudes are like, "Oh, well, things escalated quickly, though." <laughs> After that, yeah, I, you know, but I, I mean, mean this you is got arm Fleming. Race. Fleming's healthy, so uh, that's a big I wanna, deal. I, JSN, I want to see him. I want to see him blow up so big. Yeah. I'm so, Fleming. I'm rooting for Fleming a lot. So yeah, uh, goodbye to uh, JMO and um, hello, uh, Peli uh from USC linebacker. Uh, don't forget, he was a five star coming out of Bishop Gorman in Vegas. A uh, cousin of Haskell Garrett, and uh, he came out of that 2018 class. Was a huge Buckeye lean, and ended up uh, going to USC. Now uh, realized the errors in his ways, and has righted the ship and uh, headed towards Columbus. Uh, no official announcement yet, which is retarded, uh, odd to say the least. But he is in the student directory and. There's photos on Haskell Garrett's Instagram of him and uh, Paley, Paley like in uh, town, hanging out, out right? in Columbus. Yeah. yeah. So um, I like this kid. He's 6'2", 250. So he's like your prototypical middle linebacker. He's going to cut some weight. He can't be 250 as a linebacker anymore. But uh, I watched his highlight tape at USC, and he's he's gone through a few injuries, an ankle, a concussion, um, nothing consistent, you know, not not like three knee injuries or something, but not, not like an issue, like or no, no. multiple concussions. Exactly. Right. So, so it's it's a matter of him being healthy enough to be on the field, and I I don't think he's going to start in front of um, guys like Taraja and Gant and and those guys, but uh, he is going to add some depth, which we obviously need, you know. Uh, really. Do you don't think? I mean, have you looked at our depth chart? I know the depth chart. I do not, but I have not seen this kid. I've not seen any videos, or and I don't remember seeing. I mean, I didn't watch too much USC over the last couple of years. Who did? Why not? Um, so I don't. Rem- did they play last I year? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, with you, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I don't. So I've never. I don't. I can't say I've ever seen the kid play, but I would have thought. I know he was highly ranked, but with our, I mean, I think that's our football coaches, our our defensive staff telling us we're not, we may like what we have, but we definitely don't have enough of it. Yeah, it it should be obvious that he went after Toe Toe from Tennessee. Right. And now there's, there's, like. Right. So that means, but that kind of tells me that that could also mean they don't think we have enough. These guys have been in the program however many years. We've seen all these guys for a while, but none of them are really showing us what we need to see. And I'm talking about Gant, and I'm talking right. about Kayvon Pope, and those guys. And may, you know, maybe Taraja looks great, mm-hmm. you know, but it's the specifically middle linebackers, right? Uh, Henry Toto was a, li- a middle linebacker, right? right. Yep. I believe. Yep. So who do we who do we have penciled in to play the middle right now? Because we're looking to find somebody to push in. And is don't what forget, the coaches are telling us. Don't forget Gaines so injured know. with the foot, ankle thing. Okay, so, so we don't. So we don't. We don't have it at middle linebacker right now. Then is, is that it's that mm-hmm. seems to be the case. Sean, what do you think okay. about bringing in this guy from USC? I don't know. I mean, you know, I wasn't a big fan of the Toa Toa, uh, now the Paleo Toa, whatever the name is. Um, I, I'm not sure. You know, I I remember these all these guys' names when they were coming out, right? Because they were five stars, top 100 kids. Um, so I, I I wonder. You know, part of it is is it kind of a hey, we really need someone there because it doesn't seem like we're going after. You know, uh, there's probably a bunch of other portal guys um, at linebacker out there in the country. But 
we're only going after you if you're a fucking former top 100 five star stud. Sure. Um, yeah. It seems like we're going after other guys. So I, it's Which, just that, hey, this is our this is our luxury to go after these types of guys. If we don't get them, we don't get them. But outside of that, we're good with where we're at. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know because if if, if, I, if the coaches really felt we were weak there, we'd have already brought in a, a couple decent kids from the portal. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with you 100. percent They're bring they're trying to bring in quality depth, not just warm bodies, because we have warm bodies on the bench, the guys that haven't played. I mean, but but here's what we got. Uh, just looking at the scholarship grid, uh, so that 2018 class, who we have left is uh, Gant, Mitchell, and Kayvon Pope. Okay, we know those names. Um, Again, not a lot of snaps between them. Then behind them, you got Craig Young, who's going to be uh, playing the bullet, which is the outside kind of um, slot linebacker hybrid, safety hybrid thing. And then you got Tommy Eichenberg. Hasn't even seen a significant snap at linebacker at all. Um, behind those two, you got uh, Simon and Melton. Uh, and then Reed Carrico. I mean, we got like three guys that haven't even seen the field. And Carico's a true freshman, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah. I mean, nobody, none of them playing time at all. I don't know. I just it it does it's it's a huge concern. I ain't scared. I'll take those dudes. Well, yeah, till they blow a fucking uh, play and and they're chasing somebody down the field. I, oh, I hope I'm so misinterpreting I mean, the coaches. I just, I feel the coaches are telling us. People like that. So what if Paleo blows the play? Be like, oh fuck, brought this guy and he sucks. I mean, hey, that's the game. Well, I, I think the issue that I'm pointing out is more about depth. Guys that have played real snaps, not just guys. I don't football. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I like bringing him in. It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it doesn't hurt to, you know, add more bodies to a, a thin area. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're still looking at a DB. Um, I think that's a realistic possibility. But I haven't heard anything uh, concrete lately. Um, I want to. I want to know the health of Cam Brown. That's what I'd like to get well, an update on. How, how is he looking? I mean, is he going to be able to start the season full speed? That's, that's huge. Very concerning, He's, yeah. There is, I mean, like, we no don't have, experience behind him. Yeah. I, I mean, we, Marcus Williamson needs to be kept at the, you know, safety or nickel position. we got to have we got to have two experienced corners. Mm-hmm. Especially, I mean, we can't just have our whole fucking back seven be inexperienced. That's not that's not good for anyone. Regardless of how much fucking talent you have on off or on offense or in the recruiting guidelines, mm-hmm. you can't have your back seven all have no experience. I mean yeah. you can we can we can get by but we're not gonna go undefeated. Mm-hmm. You know? Well yeah. that's a bit of a stretch. You got Proctor, you got Proctor, you got seven banks. I mean those guys got some experience. Back there. Well, okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's I was two ex- dudes. Literally, literally, I was ex- I was excluding those two people. That's it. So the other five. I mean, our, but I, it'll get us through the Big Ten, even if we're play, you know, as inexperienced and whatever. Without Cam Brown, we'll get through the Big Ten probably. But we're not going to challenge for national title, and that's what we're. That's why. That's why we're here. You know. It's, that's, so I, don't know. Gonna, I mean, some dudes on that defense that, and like. You know, three games in, we're going to be talking about it. And it's going to be like, holy shit. This dude is out of his mind. He's going to be better than any of these people that we're even talking about. And I don't know who it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be someone. And Hopefully, maybe it is yeah, Cam Brown because we've never got to really see him play much. Or or any of these other young guys. Like, you remember uh, you so. remember the one remember the one year Marshawn Lattimore started? His, yeah. one, his first year starting? I think that was 16, maybe. Dude, like, he just, like, we didn't, we never saw Marshawn Lattimore. He was injured, never saw him on the field, really, for anything. Then 
he just started the season like, oh, hey, this guy's one of the best in the country. Yeah. <laughs> he played like it all year long and then got drafted in the top ten. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to see that at a, at a, somebody like Craig Young or somebody. That'd be, you know, that'd be huge. I think, or, or, or even a Taraja or someone like that is like, oh my gosh, this guy's an all-American linebacker. You know, he, yeah, why, he just was... Why, why the hell was Tuck Borland playing there? Right, and, and that'd right. be great, but you can't assume that's going to happen for anybody. I mean, it sounds no. awesome. No, but it is. It's going to, and it does every year. The guys that go out, I mean, guys get on the map every year. Yeah, but you we don't know who excited. that is. You can't pinpoint, oh, this guy's going to blow up this year. You're, you're grasping at straws. Oh, so. I, I, I don't know. But the coaches in practice know, and again, maybe they don't think. Uh, I think they got. What? Lost John? Him. Is he out of the maze yet? I can't. How many fucking doors did he open? Oh, wow, three. <laughs> <laughs> Am I with you? you there you are. You guys in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory? I mean, <laughs> it sounds like you just you just going in and out of like thirty doors. Yeah, they're all short ones. Yeah, you keep getting they get smaller, smaller and smaller. He's <laughs> keep getting crouching over. I had to, I had to duck and yeah. It's all those tunnels. <laughs> anyway, all those sorry. tunnels under his basement. Uh, Joe, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Sean, no, we're not trying to guess who's going to have a breakout season. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm, I kind of skeptical about a, a linebacker doing that because to me it. I don't know. I hope I'm misinterpreting what the coaches are saying. I think they're saying we need help at linebacker. We don't think we have That's enough. That's definitely what they're saying. That's a loud and clear. Know. Those are orange barrels on the highway. Well, okay. So, but we're only, but we are only going after former elite prospects. Sure. Why that not? We know of. I mean, that, it's Ohio right, State. That we know of, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they got like a board. Of shit, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy. If we can't score on these top two guys that are former five stars, you can have any of those buddy, any of those players call up one of their buddies on, you know, damn near any team and say, hey, go in the portal and I'll say to take you as linebacker. And the players would be jumping all over it. I just, we would, we would be getting other linebackers if that was such a big need. And maybe we will. Maybe we're holding out to try and get these home runs. Now we got it. And maybe that's good for us. But but do we have it? Why isn't he on the team? Why isn't it announced? That's a little weird to me. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know the reasoning well, there. And dude started a year at USC. So would would we not assume that he's coming here, one planning on starting? No. I mean, why, why? I think. Why would, I think when you're coming to Ohio State, it's presented to you. They're not bullshitting players, whether they're a new recruit or a transfer. They're not bullshitting yeah. you. You're you're coming here to compete to play. You're not coming here yeah. gifted yeah, yeah, yeah. a position. Yeah, I know. I know they're not. They're never going to promise anybody a certain position because they everybody they have is good. Um, but I'm, that's not. I, I wasn't. I wasn't getting that back. Um, but I mean, just with his presumption that, like, obviously he's going to get an opportunity. To outplay the other guys, I and I, I would think that he would. I would think that, you know, I don't know. I just I don't think our linebackers are good. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. I don't know if we have yeah, good enough I, linebackers. I'm on board. I, I think we. Sean's, I think we've just Sean's got a different we opinion. And, I believe. How, uh, how many years does he have? Two. He has two years of eligibility. Right. So, I mean, maybe, maybe he's coming in with the presumption that, hey, you know what, Taraj and Gant probably leave even if I'm not the starter. And then next year I would I would almost guarantee he's a fucking starter. If he stays two years, he's going to be a starter at some point. Probably. Yeah. yeah it, it, you know, unless the injuries have, you know, hindered his, his play. But um, I really want to get into this well, quick JTT update. We, we buried that topic pretty well. Good job. Um so JTT, we all know, a um, uh, huge fan of all the douchebags from Bama uh, on Twitter a week ago that were making fun of Ohio State coaches for wearing the uh, the 
Polynesian flower style polo shirts and meeting JTT at the airport. Thank you for uh, trying to make fun of something that worked. Appreciate that. And I took a flamethrower to all you guys on Friday. And thanks for blowing up my Twitter. I enjoyed all of the um, uh, repartee, <laughs> let's say. Uh, very uninformed and the bottom 1% of Bama fans, obviously, uh, took the bait from me. <laughs> but I enjoyed it immensely. Um, so JTT is all but signed and sealed to Ohio State, in my opinion. Uh, do you guys have a, have a different opinion right now? Uh, and, that guy's been an uh, enigma wrapped in the riddle the whole time. Um, I certainly think it's a big Ohio State lean, but for him to stay out west wouldn't surprise me. But it's, it's either staying home or going to Ohio State, obviously. Yeah. I, I, could, I can... I've listened to... I don't know. i listened to probably 15 or so different people on this topic. Yeah. Uh, you know, insiders inside the program, whatever, you know, podcasts, other guys, columnists, every, all signs point to when the news came down to Bama, uh, the Bama visit was canceled, all, you know, 98 to 100% across the board, everybody's saying. There's nobody not saying. Even You know, there's nobody coming out with anything other than that. Some people aren't saying or some people aren't commenting. But nobody's coming out to the contrary. So, mm. I, you would think it's a slam dunk, right? It, it, but well, yeah, the guy the guy doesn't talk to anybody. The, the guy on his recruitment, man. Right. So I, nothing is is I, yeah. locked in stone or whatever. But it has to be within a week. I mean, he's got about another week. Um, I believe their uh, their summer. Summer schedule starts I July think, 5th. July 7th, 5th? 5th, 5th something okay. like that, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, fourth is Sunday. So probably, yeah, probably the fifth. Um, I would imagine he would be registered for that uh, if he was coming here. So within a week, he should be. I'm going to use my same reasoning as I used against Alabama as an option. They run a 3-4. Oregon runs a 3-4. I realize Oregon has Thibodeau and those other guys. Uh, Eric, what's, what's his name? Eric Armstead, a more recent commit or a more recent NFL player. But uh, and Thibodeau is obviously a high NFL draft pick next year. But we run a 4-3. We put our DNs in a position to come off the edge. The three four is not the same. An end in that scheme yeah, yeah. is not the same. So again, that's why I, I went against Alabama initially. They run a fucking three four. Same with Oregon. So that's why I'm saying the Bosa's and Chase Young have have yes. encapsulated what a DN looks like at Ohio State. And it looks pretty fucking good if you ask me. And 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 we already and there's already one of them there. He oh. would be the second one there, the second and great prospect. You know what I mean? Jack Sawyer and like, JTT yeah. coming off the edge for three years. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, exactly. I, it, it seems like I said. I don't know. Nobody. I have not heard any comments or I've seen anything on any website that says anything other than Ohio State. Mm-hmm. So. It and could Oregon for pull an upset here? Uh, this is getting mm, done, man. Come on. Probably not. But yeah, he's. I don't know. The kid's not looking for the exposure or the you know the attention. I don't think he didn't. And from what everybody says, he's you know he's got you know a good background. That it's not this isn't part of the deal. But by him not making a decision, it's causing more attention. Um, and it's yeah. probably just going to be like a. It's probably just going to be like a little statement release. No press conference. I'm not that. sure it'll be that. He'll just show up in the student directory one day. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> and everybody will be it's, posting it'll, it'll, screenshots it'll, of it. He'll come out of admissions office, text coach, hey, coach, everything's everything's all good. See you tomorrow. Yeah. And you know, and then I'm in. You know, it probably it probably will be something like that. And, yeah. You know, Ryan Day's not going to be the first one to run off the Twitter. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, it, but it should be official. It's got to be official within, you know, you say like within a week or sometime this week. Uh, yeah. I, I would have to guess. He's on commit watch. Yeah. Hundred percent. I was hoping. I was hoping. You know, we might have news before we aired this tonight. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. All right. Anyways, yeah, it's super exciting, man. I mean, dudes. Dude wants to. He do said he wants to play end. He, he feels he could play anywhere on the line. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, you picture him with Sawyer, um, and then we still got him in this year. I mean, hopefully he. I mean, I'm sure he's been working out. He hasn't just been sitting around since yeah. you know since he's got done with high school. Yeah. So, all right. I'm sure so, him in ready. Yeah. So we're all in agreement. JTT's all but sign and seal. Right. Yeah, he has to be man. It would, this would be the ultimate fuck you if he <laughs> chose. <laughs> yeah, it would be crazy. This would be the mm-hmm. ultimate though if he just went to you know to Oregon. He just said, "No, I'm going to Oregon." Because Oregon's Oregon. defensive line recruiter or defensive line coach is so much better than Larry Johnson. <laughs> I- uh, Come on! I, mean, no, I, I did hear they offered him a basketball scholarship too. Right. Um, that's and, and that's something. That, no, but it's something that that kid's into. So you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Just, I, Joe, I'm not saying it's likely or, or it would be smart. Obviously, <clears throat> I think the high, I think high state would be the best option for him, and plus, you know, he'd be loved and everything here. Uh, I'm just saying it would just be crazy. It would be a crazy story for him to pick. Like, if he just, I got out of the blue, if nobody saw it, you know, picked Oregon or something like that. Right. I, I don't, I don't know why, I would, I would love to find out, if that were the case, what, what would be his decision? What was it based on? What did they offer that we didn't have? I would love to hear that, if that were ever to happen. But, you know, it looks like he's, he's, you know, it's, it's a done deal here. But, like, <laughs> it's not final yet, so, uh, so you never know. You have, I do have that little bit of doubt because he hasn't made it official. Yeah. If he was so enamored with us and so and we you know knocked it out of the park with him and Larry Johnson's all that, why is it not done yet? So, but yeah. it, it it could already be done though. It could he could have told the coaches, look, I'm I'm just waiting to this date or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. it could be something that like that too. We don't know. But anytime every day goes by, it gives a little more doubt. But it. it you would think it sounds good. Right. So anyways, so let's get into this. Uh, I think we buried that one well. But let's quickly get into this 12-team playoff debate. Um, we all know uh, the gist of it, right? I mean, so you're, you're looking at going from 4 to 12. Um, it's, it's just, I, I, I have a hard time talking about it. It just frustrates the shit out of me. Um, 12 fucking teams, honestly. We couldn't just go to 8. We're going to 12 now. We're going to 12. Okay. So, six highest ranked conference champs are in. Plus, six at large. So, that goes by their rankings. Right? So, you got your four highest ranked conference champs get a bye. The other eight will play a first round game on a campus, college campus. Um, I assume the higher seed gets to host, so you could piss yeah. and, you could go back and forth about that for a fucking month if you wanted to. You know. Five um, plays twelve, yes. six plays eleven. Right. So when it gets down to seven versus eight, you can, you know, have some bitching going on for sure. Um, so anyway uh, no automatic qualifiers for the Power Five conferences, so you're not automatically in at all. Um, my thing is though, this is supposed to yeah, start. Well, well, yeah, you are. Hold on, Joe. What? Conference champions in. I said no automatic qualifiers for the Power Five conferences. Okay. So you're not automatically in. On any kind of like automatic, you know, we were in the championship game kind of deal, you know, for our for our conference. So, uh, 
these games will begin, as of right now, they're penciled in to be uh, taking place two weeks after the conference championships. So what's, that's like the first week of December, usually. So right before Christmas, it seems like uh, these first round games would take place between 5 through 12. Okay. Uh, and then the semifinals uh, would be 10 to 14 days later. Uh, no idea when the championship games would be played when you get into the you know the higher uh, end of the, the, the playoffs. So obviously this is all geared by money um, between the TV networks and the poll the bowls. Um, they want to keep the bowl system intact to some degree and utilize them for some of these games, especially the uh, the end of the playoffs. So um, I, I got a big problem with 12 teams. Let's let's start there. Jeff, what do you think? 12 teams too much, too little? Right, right uh, in four, I guess if four, it was... Top four teams getting a bye is okay with you? I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe if you went with the four getting a bye... They should still be allowed to host a home game, in my opinion. I agree. Um, I but I don't. Ah, I don't know. It, it seems like they were eventually going to get to twelve. You know, even if they went to if they just went to six or eight. Um, you know, in six, I never really liked given you know the vibe then. But um, I guess if they're just gonna. Roll with twelve for a while, but you know, with twelve is going to lead to sixteen. Then, yeah. you know, if you're jumping this much, jumping from four to twelve, they're going to jump again to sixteen because the, after you know, give it, give it, give twelve two, three, four years, and they're going to somebody's going to say, "What? Well, let's really get sixteen in, no more buys, and let's just one through sixteen it, like one, you know, one bracket of the fucking basketball tournament." But I don't know. I, I would. I think I would have went felt better with eight. Um, still having the home game on campus. I love that idea. I fucking love uh, Auburn. You know, coming up to Notre Dame, or you know, just just some some Southern schools or some USC at Penn State type Saturday night games. You know, that's cool. Um, so I definitely like the game on campus. I wish the buy or the, the teams with the buy. Also got a campus game, mostly because I'm expecting the Buckeyes to be one of the top four. I'd like to see them play a home game against a team from the South in the winter time. Sean, what do you think? Well, is it, is it too few or too many? Uh, it's either too few or too many. And in my personal view, <laughs> it's too too few. It should be 16. I think it's I think it's absolute bullshit to give. Teams one through four, which I fully expect Ohio State to be, like you said, Jeff. But I think it's complete bullshit to give those teams that are basically already dominating college football a fucking extra week where they don't have to play a, a top ranked team. I mean, that's that's just the grind. I, I I disagree with that. I think it gives the top four that's a good point, a huge, a huge advantage, just a, a huge advantage. And on top of that, you know, the way they've got it. One through four don't get a home game right now. It's dumb. Make it to sixteen. Everybody top eight get home games, and and that would be beautiful. And then going to your bowls or whatever you want to do. If you want, yeah. if you wanted to go to eight, I'm fine with that too. And like you said, do that. But twelve to me, any any model that sets up buy games for already teams like Bama and Ohio State, like we're in already preloaded, um, you know, to be twelfth uh, um, ranked Louisville. You know, something like that. It's just, I don't know. I love I, it. I, I agree, Sean. I agree. I think if you're, if you if you jump to 12, why didn't you just go ahead and jump to 16? Because do you agree that by, by putting in the 12 now, in, in a matter of a couple of years, however long they send this agreement, uh, you know, they're probably going to sign it for five years. Yeah, but, because what, it, what I think you're going to see, and, and you probably going to go to 16. Way, is it's going to be the top four teams that get to buy that win it every year anyway. Yeah. yeah. And 
I mean, look at it now. You give give Ohio State, Oklahoma, Bama, and Clemson a, another bye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. think the team they have to play next week play another stud team the week before, so they can't like get extra ready for you. They can't rest. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 it's brutal. Um, at that you level, guys, and I just you guys realize just, how many games you're going to fucking play. Well, here, here's that's the another thing. thing. I would actually get rid of uh, the championship game. I'd get rid of the Big Ten championship uh, and go back to the way we used to. And that, no, uh, that'll never happen. That will never. That won't happen, though, Sean. No, you know that. No, yeah, yeah, but you can give. You can give uh, the way you do it is you give the Big Ten network uh, any games, any first round games that uh, have Big Ten teams in them or something. I mean, there's a way to do it. Uh, obviously, the Big Ten wants that money in that game, but if you give them a playoff game, it's going to be more money. You know, so I mean, there's a way to do it. You just got to come up with the right thing where everybody wins. I just, I got a problem with going, I, I, I feel like this um, high number, like anything more than four, is just becoming a uh, a participation trophy. I disagree. Seriously. Imagine that. No, I, I didn't expect you to agree. <laughs> uh, I just, I feel like 12 teams... Look at who you're fucking adding into this playoff. Is it good for a Coastal Carolina to get blown the fuck out by a Notre Dame, Texas yeah. A&M? Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Why? It's great. It's great. What's that do because, for you? I'm not watching that game. Seven, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Not Coastal Carolina. Fuck no. You're watching the playoff game. I'm, I'm not watching... Are. Let's go back to 2019. I'm not watching. Yeah, you look at most, most of the games are. Um, I, I look back like the last five years that it laid out what the games would have been, yeah, and it looks game. amazing. It looks amazing to me. I'd love to see those games. Memphis versus Georgia sounds awesome. Utah versus Oregon sounds awesome. And what about rematches? Yeah. Let's talk rematches. What if we end up playing Michigan three times? Get rid of the Big Ten championship game. Oh, that would be right. awesome. Right, exactly. You get rid of the Big Ten championship game, we could play them three times. No, you couldn't. How? You play them week 12, last game of the season. You play them in the Big Ten championship game because they're the second best team. Then you play them in the fucking playoff. What do you mean? I just told you there's no Big Ten championship game. Well, okay. now you're getting well, replaying them in the okay. Big Ten Championship, which right. is impossible right Then now. let's go, okay, instead of three in a row, we'll play them twice in a row. Potentially. Even better. Come on, man. Why? I don't get how more is better. I, I, I disagree with this entirely. I know that the whole point is because four teams sport. are getting 71% of the four playoff spots, okay? And I don't care. Do better, other schools. I don't care about UCF getting into the fucking playoff or Cincinnati for that matter. I don't need I you. I do. I'd like to see it. I think it's good for the sport. It is. It adds nothing. And, and and you know what? When I'm when I'm fucking Cincinnati or something, don't, don't tell me that a Cincinnati or one of these teams can't come in and play the games of their lives and fucking upset people. It happens every year, all the time, in every sport. Except football, because they don't allow it. They don't want any of the blue bloods to get knocked off. And I, I said, I love it. Oh God! Because and 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 if you look at it, um, a couple of years, uh, Ohio State didn't make it in. We probably were the best team in the country, it's and and would have made it in. Honey, give me some more bourbon. Sean's talking shit. <laughs> I just, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I can't get on board with 12. I can barely get on board with eight. And I, I just, I don't think every, I don't, we don't need these, these, um, I don't think we need these underdog stories to add anything to the playoff picture. They're not Why adding not? anything. They're not adding anything. Quality. Well, I know. I, it, it, it's completely ruined the NFL. I, I don't really watch the NFL playoffs at all. I, I mean, it's parody, obviously, and, because... And, and it's ruined high school football. I don't watch high school and, either. And, and, and it's ruined every single sport on every level. 
I, I don't know what you mean. The playoffs? I mean, yeah, you need to have playoffs. And it should be 16. Well, then why stop there? Let's go, let's go to the basketball 64 team format and even with a playoff play-in game on top of that. Let's go 70. No, I already said you get rid of the championship game and voila, you got the extra round. All right. And the, the championship game would be an option. But definitely not losing a non-conference game that they've also mentioned, like you know, dropping a non-conference game. But that's 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 bank for all the teams. Your stadium <laughs> is going to lose that, right? So that's not that's not gonna, that that'll never happen because TV networks team, lo- lose that. Fuck no. Right. The yeah. only upside, and this is me grasping at the most beautiful straw in the room, is that. Notre Dame can never get a bye. I like that. Hold on, why not? Because they don't have a... They're not in a conference. Yeah, and only the top four conference champ. Top four conference champs get a bye. Yeah. So uh, so that's an, another reason, though. They'll never... Because they made winning your conference championship a, pri- you know, a criteria for the playoff, mm-hmm. they're never going to get rid of the conference championship game. Yeah, the best they could They're do count, I mean, is be a number five seed and host a uh, a playoff I game at their place. That's the best. And their their AD is on the they're fucking they're panel. Yes, yeah, so he signed off on it. So yeah, because he knows he's already inking that deal with the ACC. He's like whatever. Probably he probably <laughs> is. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Sean. Yeah, I agree. I just. I, I don't want to see some of these shit games, man. I don't. I, I, I can't believe you think they're shit. I'll, I'll watch almost any of those. Top 12 teams, football. I, I'll watch pretty much any time there's a top 12 matchup in football throughout the regular season. I'm going to fucking watch it. I'm interested in that game typically. So now you're going to throw it and make it a playoff game on top of that? Fuck yeah, I'm watching that game. Yeah, Where me I, too, Sean. I'm, I'm in with you. I'm with you there, Sean. I, I, I am looking forward to seeing more good teams Fuck play each you other. Guys. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on. Easy, bro. Get off, get off his lawn, man. I mean, it's going to be good. It's going to be so good they're going to move that shit to 16. It, it, this 12 is dumb. It's like anytime you get a chance to do something, 8 would have been smarter or 16. 12 is just the, the dumbass move. That, that you have to accommodate for buys, and it's so fucking dumb. I just, I, th- I think this entire bullshit is to just give the group of five teams a little bit of. It's, it's to placate them. It's to give them a little nibble. Here, we can get you into the playoff. You'll get fucking smoked no, first not. round. What the fans want? If you're not Bama or Clemson, it's what college football okay. wants. Then man. here, let me let me lay this on you, Sean. We're Buckeye fans, right? Do you care about Ohio State or do you care about college football first and foremost? College football. Well, then you're on the wrong show. Yeah, maybe. It's it's been lovely (laughs) having you. All right. Because it's going to cost the Buckeyes an extra game. There's no college football. There's no fucking Ohio State, okay? It's going to cost the Buckeyes an extra game to win a championship. That increases the chances for losing, not winning the championship. What's an extra game do for Ohio State? Nothing. Maybe. Hey, everybody's got the extra game, Joe. Yeah, I, I realize Never that. I realize so, that. Yeah, guess what? It's really hard to fucking win championships. So, yeah, I know. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're getting at. I'm, I'm just not down with more games. That's, that's my foundation. I'm not down with more well, games, more teams. This is, uh, again, like I said, it's it's uh, handing trophies out for, hey, you made it to the playoffs. All these coaches now that make it into the playoffs in the top 12, they're going to be like, hey, you, you got to re-sign me. You can't fire me. I made it in the fucking playoffs. Number 12 every year. Yeah, 
cheapens it cheapens the quality of the sport overall. Uh, I don't think so. I think it adds. I think it adds some excitement because you know there's going to be. I mean, come on! There's upsets every week when you're looking at the top ten. Every week there's upsets, and you're going to see teams that you think are locks in that playoff get beat. You're going to see Clemson, who rides a cupcake schedule, um, play a, a Cincinnati and get everything they want, or or North Carolina. I mean, they already play them, but you know, play a Auburn or whoever. You know, a decent SEC team, a Florida that just hands them their ass. Because they ain't used to playing that tough a ball. See, I and think that, that, ain't bad, that ain't bad for the sport, in my opinion. I think making it into the playoffs should be an elite club, and a three-loss team should not be able to make it into the fucking playoffs. Okay, and that okay, is that okay. is realistic in this new scenario. Okay, I mean, I'll still call bullshit on that because, in in again, in what sport do only ten percent? Less than ten percent of the teams make the playoffs. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Well, in, my, in most of the professional leagues, it's closer to half. I mean, it's closer to fifty percent. I'm not sure that's good. Uh, it's, it, but why do they do you it? Got, you got NBA teams NBA that are sub five hundred making into into the playoffs. You're saying that's good. That's okay. Well, we're not going to get there with uh, top 12 teams, are we? No, but I'm saying I I don't think a two or three loss team should be able to get into a playoff. You fucking lost two games in your motherfucking season. And especially if you take away the conference game, Sean, like you proposed. If you lost two regular season games out of 12, no, I don't care if you're, pay, you're playing eight or nine conference games, which the SEC still not on board with the nine conference. I know. Uh, surprising. I don't know why you should be rewarded. I feel like being in the playoffs is a reward, not a right. And losing two games in your regular season is garbage. I think you're a garbage team. And again, like I said, you're going to get blown the fuck out in the first round. And then what do we gain? And- we, we, they gain a bunch of money. So, I mean, isn't that what you said it's all about? So, good for that. We get a garbage get a game. We get a garbage fucking game on TV that we're supposed know, to be I interested in. I, I don't know how you sit there and keep saying it over and over again that top ten matchups are garbage games. Like I said, on any Saturday, if there's a top ten matchup, that's probably the game I'm going to watch. I mean, what, what the fuck are you watching on Saturday? Hey, and the thing about this too, like you go back and look at look at some of our teams that had one loss and missed the playoff. Twenty fifteen, that team that team would have made it the twelve team playoff. And do you think do you think we had a right to play for the national title that year, just because we had shit the bed one game against Michigan State? I think we were still the best team in the country that year. I do too. Man. I think I think we would have proved it if we would have been in a playoff. We would have had a first, we, would have, we would have had a home game. We would have had a fucking home game first round, and then, and then played. And then. I don't know who the twelve seed was that year, but we would have been five. I think we were five that year. Well, yeah, we were, and 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 then you let a team like Clemson with Florida State, and Miami, and the toilet, you know, basically walk into that every year, playing nobody all year. I think it'd be nice for them to have a couple more tough games than two. Sure. I mean, I, I don't know. I probably would have picked eight before twelve. I mean, I think, I think, my, I think eight would have been my number. Um, just because you know, one loss on one, be one bullshit circumstance. You have you lose one game, uh, and then you don't make it. I think you may you may still be the best team in the country on, on that circumstance. So I think you should be able to earn it. It would have been fine. You take the five power five conference champs and three at large. Boom. That's yeah. That's how it would have been. Um, but I mean, tw- th- we'll see how it works, Joe. I mean, th- if they're smart, they'll sign a lower time, lower tenure deal, so we can kind of see if it works, and then leave themselves open to renegotiate. 
uh, that would be the smart plan. You no, know, but on. no, but I'm sure because the money's gonna be so big, they're gonna like in like a you know, at least a five year deal. Probably it should be you should just go. Hey, we're gonna reevaluate in two years, mm. and then they, then you can say what well, we we kind of like it. You know, we're gonna keep the same or move on. But yeah. no, they're probably gonna lock in a long term deal, and then everybody's gonna argue about it for the next however many years. But mm. I don't know. We're gonna be in, and we're gonna have a chance every year, whether we have one bad loss or maybe even two. You know, two good losses. We're still going to have a chance to play for a national title, Joe. Yeah, the regular season, it really doesn't matter. I mean, uh, don't lose more than one if you're in Ohio State. And you're okay, good. so you, you, you're you're going to so you're just going to be upset that the you, you think the regular season is weakened or not as necessary. I don't know, the, you know the exact word, but well, I mean, it, it seems <laughs> unimportant, like. Uh, you know, it used to matter if you lost late in the season. Now, as long as you don't fall out of the top 12, which you shouldn't with one loss, uh, two losses is where you get dicey. Three losses, I don't know. You might be able to still weasel your way in if you win your conference somehow or, or whatever, but you get an at-large bid. Uh, I just uh, I think, I think it's... Uh, I think it's great. I think it allows for teams to schedule some awesome non-conference games because now I think you can have two losses and get in. There'll be two. There'll be two or three of those teams every year to get in. And so you know what? Give me more Ohio State, USC, Notre Dame. Give me Bama. Maybe they'll open up some stuff and and be willing to play a tough team on the road because a loss doesn't kill you anymore. I mean, I, I think it has the potential to make. Uh, the regular season better. And picture this: say, say LSU has a season like you know with Joe Burrow or something, where LSU's on top. They in a, they're in a slugfest with Bama. They squeak one out over Bama, and then Bama as the sixth seed. Well, now I, I guess the circumstance would take for Bama to be like an eight to twelve, but to get Bama coming north to to say a Notre Dame or I don't know, picture I don't know Indiana. <laughs> who, are the, who are the best teams up north? Uh, Wisconsin. Us, the, Wisconsin. Can you imagine seeing Bama or LSU or you know whichever one of them out of the West there or Ole Miss? <laughs> they got to come up and play Wisconsin in late December. That's awesome. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm, Joe, and I don't care, Joe, it, that it might be like a 5-12 or a 6-11. I don't give a shit. I'm going to love to watch that game. You know what I mean? A Florida coming up to play Penn State in the whiteout? Fuck yeah, I'll take some of that. I don't give a fuck what their seeding is in the playoff. Oh it's God, just like man. it's almost it's almost like an extended regular season just with the the cool non conference games at the end. It's all it's all perspective, man. Yeah, man. And yeah, man. Actually, meet games, games where there's something on the line still. Instead of these garbage bowls these teams will be playing in. I'm not interested in watching Florida Penn State in the Outback Bowl. I'm really not. But if it's a playoff game, all right, I'm into that. Sure. They got and you. it's and, you know, and it and it's potentially played on campus, not you know, not New Year's morning, uh right. New Year's Day morning or something in fucking Tampa or Orlando where everybody's half asleep still. You know, you're playing you know, like I said, are you playing an eight o'clock game at the fucking whiteout? Forget it. You know, what are we talking about? Well, we got. Uh, I, I'm just. I'm, I'm just saying. You can look and look at it. I understand what I agree with you. Like some of the things you're saying, but there is a benefit to it, though. I mean, we are going to get more as fans of college football. We're going to get more entertainment. Okay. And that's a win-win. All right. The schools get more money. The players will get more money. And, and when it's easier for Ohio State, guess what? We would have been in every playoff under this rule, every single one. Yeah, I understand that. So I, you know, and now that the kids are going to make money, I don't. Even, we don't need to feel guilty about well, wanting more and more and more and more. It's, more. it's coincidental that that happened at the exact same time as NIL. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so, we're gonna we're, we're gonna ask these, we're gonna ask these kids to play sixteen games like pros. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute, we're, we are gonna let them get paid, right? <laughs> So, all right, we got three Twitter questions we got to run through here in five minutes. Yes. 
and uh, crank these out. Uh, number one, coming to you from at Dutch Oven sixty nine. I don't even I, want to think about that one. <laughs> That's disgusting, dude. Oh, thanks. Um, I think we kind of answered this question already, but will JTT be a Buckeye this year, Sean? Yay, B. Okay. You got a percentage? I'm strong. Hey, I'm 80%. All right. I'm, in sales, I'm in sales, man. I need that order in my hand. All right. I ain't got an order until I got an order. Get them to sign on the line, which is dotted. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, To a number, I'll, I'll go 90. 90%. I'll, I'll say I'm a little more. Yeah. All right. Um, But th- that... There is that doubt, though, that, mm-hmm. you know, since he hasn't signed yet, why hasn't it, why is it not done? Or, you know, maybe it's done and no, it's not public, which we yeah. could all just be, you know, tooling I'm, our thumbs. I'm going 100% Buckeye, I think. Uh, it's just a matter of hours, maybe you, minutes. You think it is official? I think we're going to hear it before 4th of July weekend. So I, I'm going to count it as a... Uh, New defensive end for this twenty-one class, and um, he probably won't and he's, play. He's playing now. That's he won't awesome. play. In, he won't play until middle of the year, maybe. I'm guessing he he just finished a basketball season a month ago, and he definitely hasn't been in a McMurati kind of scenario. I realize he's six four, six five, two seventy, but um, I w- looking at him when he came in off the airplane, he's not a uh, tight. 270, let's call it that. Um, anyways, let's go question number two. Uh, from at Buck Off. Okay, very creative. Uh, what will be Ohio State's toughest game this season? Uh, I can read off the schedule to you briefly if you don't have it in front of you. Uh, we go Minnesota, home, Oregon, Tulsa, Akron, Rut- at Rutgers, uh, Maryland, at Indiana, Penn State and Columbus, at Nebraska, Purdue, Michigan State in Columbus, and then at Michigan. Pick one. Jeff? Um, I'm going to have to say at Indiana, I think. Okay. Uh, I think Tom Allen, I think he's going to have that team. I don't remember. They're, they don't really have much of a non-conference, I don't believe. Uh, so they, they very well could be sitting there undefeated, uh, ho- hosting us. Um, I don't know what their, I don't know what their Saturday night primetime game situation is on campus, uh, in Bloomington, but, um, I think I, Tom Allen will have his fucking team ready to play us. I know that, mm-hmm. that I'm positive of. So, uh, you could be looking at an undefeated, you know, undefeated matchup there. Could be a big, big, a big, big 10 game, uh, primetime. Potentially. Okay. Sean? I'm going to go with the unpopular uh, pick of Minnesota, at Minnesota. Mm. Night game, starting off the season, inexperienced yeah. quarterback. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And, you know, and, and that to me is going to be the whole barometer for the season. I think uh, some of these young kids, uh, they're going to learn real quick. College football, and hopefully that quarterback, whoever that is, uh, doesn't pull. But and and I think it'll be a test, uh, like we were saying earlier, to that uh, secondary. You know, J- PJ Fleck is going to have you know a bunch of quick passes, a bunch of you know four wide sets, and all that crap. Um, and it, it's going to be an early test. I think I don't know if they got the personnel to pull it off, but. Uh, We'll see. That that game to me is gonna gonna tell a lot. So I'm. I'm I, I I sorry, Sean. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but uh, but I agree. No. I definitely agree. Um, so are you saying could, that Minnesota will have all their oars in the water? I am. Let me roll it. I mean. Well, I mean, I know we we know what we have at quarterback. He's 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 predicted. Uh, you know, first or second team Big Ten. I'm I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Tanner Morgan. But I, it, I don't know what returning outside talent he has. No, not much. I mean, he's 
he's had some guys going through the program recently, but they're all gone, if I'm yeah. correct, right? Yeah, he's kind of left on his own. So, I mean, you got an experienced quarterback. Yeah, he's going to be able to run tempo and, and do all kinds of stuff, make audibles, you know, on the line and all that against us. So, I think we will – I would, I could, be, I wouldn't be surprised if we struggled coming out to start the season. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but what's scary to me is it, is it uh, you know, again, the first time we get to see any quarterback, whoever it is, in live action, you know, and does he shit the bed and throw three picks, one for six, and you know? Yeah, I'm more worried about our defense uh, against Minnesota than I would be our offense. But, well, let me let me get you know, my just, pick in here real quick. Yeah. Um, I'm going Penn Go ahead, host, State. But if you will, Penn State, October 30th, the week after the Indiana game. Um, not saying that's a Big trap right down, game yeah. necessarily. I know it's in Columbus, but I could see us starting out flat that first half after coming off a big game, you know, at uh-huh. Indiana. That might be a close one. I'm not saying we're going to lose or it's going to be even a, a, a ten point game, but. It's going to be a, a slugfest for two to three quarters, and then you got to get back up a week later, even though it's at home. I, I, I say Penn State's going to be the toughest game. And that's that's even – I can't really say Michigan State's a tough opponent anymore, but you got Michigan State and Michigan back-to-back weeks at the end of the season. So. I, we should be playing freshman by third quarter against Michigan State this year. And having Michigan State that late in the year, you know what I mean? You know, we should be able to sit. Our, our starters should be, you know, getting their rest after halftime. You know, gearing up for Michigan. You know, getting a little rest for that. Yeah, okay. uh, I, that shouldn't be an issue. I don't. Right. I don't think that's. I would be shocked All if right. that's an issue. Right. Twitter question number three comes to us from one of my Alabama friends. Um, not really a friend, just a. Somebody that sent us a question. His name is at Crimson Taint. I assume he's an Alabama fan. I could be wrong, but kind of gross. Um, give me your Heisman top three. So top three finalists for the Heisman. Sean, uh, what do you think? You want me to give you any kind of odds? Yeah, you better give me some odds because you know I don't pay attention to that much uh, outside of uh, Buckeye football this time of year. What are, what are we looking at for odds? Uh, I don't. Okay. I know. I know who I'm talking about. No odds. Rattler, DJU, Bryce Young, JT Daniels, Sam Howell, CJ Stroud are your top six. Seven. The the quarterbacks are the best teams in the country. Right. Pretty much. I, it's, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, Frank with you. I take the field. Okay. Well, that's acceptable. Jeff? You got a top three? Just, uh, uh, yeah, guys that are, I think are going to put up crazy numbers and the teams are going to be good. Uh, Spencer Rattler is going to put up numbers this year. Oklahoma is going to be good. One loss, maybe undefeated. Uh, I think Bryce Young. Uh, I'm going... <laughs> I'm going off the board. I'm going to go with Bama's uh, electric quarterback. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, Bama's still good. I don't know, they they lose pros every year, mm-hmm. and everybody people make comments. Bama's still good. They're gonna they're gonna have they yeah. got more they got more pros. They still have more pros. We just they lost a bunch, but they got more. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Young Bryce Young was the number one dual rated dual threat quarterback in the country when he came out. Uh, DJ DJU. Uh, from Clemson, mm-hmm. of course, is going to put up numbers. There's all kinds of talent there. Um, the JT Daniels, I don't know the whole story behind him transferring out of USC. Was it just loss in the starting job, or was it injuries? Um, I don't think he's he gonna sat out last it. year. He like opted yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I, I just don't know. I I'm not sure. I'm not, I, I was never impressed with him when he when he played. And Georgia's Georgia. Until you mm-hmm. prove it to me, I'm never going to pick you. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I'd say the best teams in the country, they're quarterbacks. C.J. Stroud, if it's him, and he and he does what we think that he can do in this offense, yeah, he'll be up there too. You know, I. So, what's your final three? No, we'll go Rattler, Bryce Young, and uh, D.J. Okay, I'm going to go 
Uh, um, you know, just a, a way too early top mm-hmm. three. I'm going to go Rattler, <laughs> DJU, and CJ Stroud. Um, okay. I'm not going to put any faith ever in a Georgia quarterback since Jake from and, State and Farm. We, until we see one. I mean, until right. we see it, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? I just rewatched that game. Oh, side note. I just watched that championship game, Bama, Georgia, the other night. They were replaying it. Yeah. Uh, Jake Tom, they were, Herb Street was blowing his dick all oh, night, yeah. thinking like he was the best performance in this world. I saw him miss throw after throw after throw. Right. Like, oh, he's not a pro quarterback. He's not a pro quarterback. You know, just watch what he's doing. But I, the, the best thing about that game, I, I listened. I heard 13 straight different Alabama players mentioned, all of them in the pros. Mm-hmm. Their punter, yeah. their their third string DN. But I had to I had to check guys. I would pause it, check them online. I'm like, oh yeah, he's in the league. Yeah. 13 straight players they announced in that game. I'm not saying like repeating like two of. Mm-hmm. Jake from nine. State Farms in the league. He was like six round pick. Oh, okay, but it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. He did not look impressive in that game, as I no. as I remembered the first time. He right. looked worse the second time last season. Right. Uh, but but it's, it's it's retarded that Alabama. Everybody on the everybody that made a play on the screen they, they, until they mentioned another guy. Mm-hmm. That was it was ridiculous. They're yeah. all in the league. Every guy they mentioned. Yeah. Fucking left tackle was injured. You know, like oh, um, Jonah Williams is out this game, but we got the freshman Alex Leatherwood in. Right. Uh, you know, like yeah, five star, five star, right. pro, pro. <laughs> right. So it's right. ridiculous. Bama, Bama's gonna be good. They're always good. Sure. Uh, Bryce Young's Bryce Young's a real deal. Yeah. Okay. Lively show, boys. Thank you for putting it together. Um, as always, folks, don't forget to hit the website, thebuckeyecast dot com. Check out the new shirt designs. Uh, help out the effort and uh, follow us on social media Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, please rate and review the podcast. That'd be really helpful. Jeff, Sean, thank you. No problem, brother. All right. Talk to you guys later.